Personally, I'm also not at all convinced that the second regression kind of yields to a um, consistent estimator of the cause and effect of the number of submitted homework on the exam. And I'm also not convinced that we have an estimator that only has a small bias. The main problem is that in order to consistently estimate the cause and effect, we need a clear source of exogenous variation in our explanatory variable of interest. This means we need some reason why the number of homeworks varies between the students that is not correlated to a student's exam performance. And all reasons I can think of why the number of homeworks may vary, like um, how much does a student like the microeconomics class, may also affect the exam performance. But I want to illustrate this point first with a simulation study and then discuss it again for this homework example. Okay, here's the simulation. I have 10,000 observations, which I store on N. I draw a standard normally distributed error term U, and I draw an unobserved confounder X2, that's also a standardly normally distributed, and then I specify the X1, our explanatory variable of interest, and this shall depend on X2 on the confounder, but also on some source of exogenous variation, which I also have shown here in this graph, that X1 depends on the confounder, and some source of exogenous variation. So this is just a normally distributed variable that don't depends on, on U or X2, so it's completely independent from them, and uh, kind of it has some standard deviation, the standard deviation of the source of exogenous variation, and here's just one for the moment. Okay. Then I specify some true coefficients, so particular beta 1, that's the causal effect of x1 on y, that's equal to 1, and also the confounder affects y directly with respect to beta, beta 2, and I compute our dependent variable y. Now if I just estimate a short regression, so if I omit x2 from this linear regression, then we get a biased estimator of the true causal effect. So we estimate a, a coefficient of 1.5 roughly. But we know the true causal effect is 1. And we have already explained the reason several times. Yeah, we don't add, add the confounder here. So we, our estimator for x1 in the short regression also measures basically the indirect positive relationship via x2. If I would observe x2, the confounder. I could just add it to my linear regression, so I add, estimate here basically the long regression where I add x2, and then I get an unbiased estimator uh, for the cause of the fact beta 1. So here we see the coefficient in front of x1 is almost 1. So we always have some random noise, but um, um, uh, it's, uh, if we, it basically converges to, to 1 in probability if I increase the number of observations. So we here have an unbiased estimator. But assume we don't observe x2, but only a proxy for the confounder. And here I specify this proxy variable, so it shall be given by x2, but some random noise. So it's a noisy proxy, and this noise is just also follows a normal distribution, has some standard deviation. Uh, here it's, uh, let's for the moment set the standard deviation to 1. And now, I estimate the regression where I don't add x2, but I add the proxy variable. Now first make a guess in the quiz what happens to the bias. Here's the bias in the short regression if I add a proxy variable. 